Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello here, and welcome back to what is the start of the final set of videos for everything possible here in Dark Souls 2. It's actually a little bit sad to announce, but because this is the third and final announced set of DLC, once we get through these videos, we really won't have anything new to tackle. Until FromSoft surprises us later down the road with additional DLC, which, given the last three DLC packs, I can't say that I would complain about. But we are going to tackle Elium Lois and the Frigid Outskirts in these few videos here, and we're going to be doing it, or at least starting it off, in a little bit of a different fashion. So we're going to come up here, I'm going to show you my equipment and stats, and then I'll talk a little bit about what this run is going to comprise of and exactly how it's going to go. So you all know Solvarius using the Key to the Embedded, Composite Bow, Pyromancy Flame, Royal Kite Shield, he has some Drake Blood Armor, Engraved Gauntlets, and then the Leggings of the Drake Blood. As for rings, we're using Ring of Seal Protection plus 2, Third Dragon Ring, Flynn's Ring, and the Ring of Blades plus 2. Here's a look at the stats. If you want to see exactly what it is, go ahead and pause the video. I'm not going to stay too long on this. Now, for those of you who played this DLC, you'll know that most of the actual map itself is blocked off in some way, shape, or form by ice. And the only way to get rid of that ice is to kill Ava, the king's pet, and to have Alsana destroy the ice so we can explore fully. Now, it is my intention to show the most optimal route that I could come up with in order to get all the items in as few passes as possible, which means that instead of going through and getting all the items available right now, we're going to skip most of the items and most of the enemies and go straight to get the Eye of the Priestess so we can fight Ava in what I would consider a fair fight. We will pick up a few items along the way, just the ones that are very convenient. If they're out of the way at all, we will not be picking them up until the second pass. First, we'll deal with these soldiers here, right inside this room. Grab ourselves four Radiant Life Gems. And then head down here. There's another enemy to take out, and you'll see the room off to the right. We are going to use the elevator on the first pass, so when we come through on the second time around, we can access the chest and the items beyond those coffins that are currently blocking our way. Now we do have this enemy coming at us, and over to our right we have a retainer. That is a retainer rope. Currently, they pose no threat. Even if you start damaging them, they are not going to get up and do any damage. We got an amber herb from that enemy. But if you want to kill him now just for the souls, feel free. It's up to you two golden fruit bombs from this corpse and then we are going to start bypassing some enemies including the soldier we just ran past and all these dogs and there are items that I'm running past so please keep in mind I will be coming back to get everything so for those of you who are want to scream and pound at your monitor telling me that I miss things if I truly miss things let me know in the comments but please wait till the end of the episode before you start screaming or pulling your hair out Instead of going on the bridge, we will turn to the left, because this is the way forward. Fail that roll. Now if you are trying to run past these enemies and they're giving you a hard time, keep in mind that most of the enemies in the DLC will respond to alluring skulls. So throw an alluring skull, you'll be able to run past just about anything. past these ice crystal soldiers who cannot be backstabbed by the way for obvious reasons jump down here we'll light the bonfire go ahead and rest so we can get our health back and we will continue forward now here I am going to be killing some of the enemies because they seem to have a really wide aggro range and in order to get them to leash you really have to run pretty far but unfortunately, we do have a gate coming up in which we'll have to pull a lever in order to open the gate, and you can get stuck there with a lot of enemies on your tail if you don't take them out beforehand, which we will do. We'll ignore most of the retainers for now since they are no threat. Hiding behind this wall will allow you to take this enemy out without the soldier flinging his ice bolt at you. Which I think is always a plus. Take out just 
one more before we meet a new enemy type. So this is a Rampart Golem, and you can obtain their armor set, and you can obtain the shield and the lance, which we'll get the lance in just a little bit here. However, very easy to dodge, sidestep, and then get a backstab. Five Radiant Life Gems for our trouble. Pull this lever, open up the gate. We will have another Golem waiting on the other side for us. So to the left, that would be the way to the optional area, which we will be exploring significantly later. But for now, just head up these stairs, take care of this golem. And this golem was kind enough to drop the Rampart Golem Lance. It's a pretty neat looking lance. It doesn't have anything too unique about it. However, it does have the Grand Lance moveset. So if you like the look of this better than the Grand Lance, but you love the Grand Lance moveset, and let's be honest, who doesn't? This may be the weapon for you. By the way, I am showcasing some of the weapons and the armor that I do find, per someone's request in one of the previous videos. And frankly, it's probably something I should have been doing all along so you could actually see what the items look like and how they function. So I do apologize for that, but going forward in these videos, you will be seeing most, if not all, of those items. There's a chest straight ahead, however it is covered in ice, so we're skipping it for now. But in this alcove to the left, this is where we want to go in and pull the lever in order to raise the elevator that we saw a little bit earlier. We just need to deal with this one enemy. Go in here, pull the elevator which the only purpose this will serve is to unblock the way down below. There's nothing for us to jump on, there's nothing for us to get by getting on this elevator and riding it. There's nothing you can do because they're full of coffins. Always punish the chuggers. Or the potential chuggers. Now for you to follow the ramp up to the right instead of going down the stairs, there is a ladder that will appear once we have the Eye of the Priestess. You can actually get to it without the Eye of the Priestess just by searching the wall until it says climb up. Now you can see I was already too full so I couldn't actually pick up any of those, but you can get 8 green blossoms from that corpse. Single Crimson Water. Now we're going to enter onto a bridge. Alsana's going to have some words for us. But you can see that fiery effigy up on top of that ramp there. We're going to go up there and pick up the Eye of the Priestess, which will make things significantly easier come boss time. The Eye of the Priestess in the description says that you can now see what was formerly unseeable, or what was formerly unseen. And that includes Abba the King's Pet, it includes some enemies, a ladder, numerous things, including NPC summon signs that you don't want to miss out on. So here I am using the feather, going back to the beginning, because now we're actually going to go take out Abba the King's Pet now, so we can explore the rest of the level in full. You have two NPC summons available, we have the wonderful Masterless Glencore, who we haven't seen in quite a while in this game. And then a little bit closer to the Fog Gate, we can pick up who is soon becoming one of the DLC favorite summons, Miss Steelheart Ellie. Now if you were to enter this fight without picking up the Eye of the Priestess, as I'm sure many of you already have before, Ava's invisible. You will only see some of the puffs of snow from when the enemy is actually attacking. You can hear the enemy but you will not be able to see the enemy at all. So if you're brave and you want to take it out while invisible, there is no achievement, there is no special reward, there isn't even any new dialogue. So it's entirely up to you. I personally wouldn't recommend it. And 
completely ignoring me while I use my flame weapon. For those of you who don't know, you can get flame weapon by trading the old witch's soul with strain, and you get the old witch's soul by killing the lost sinner on New Game Plus or above. I decided since this was an icy area, the flame weapon might actually prove fairly useful. Now, Ava is not a particularly difficult boss, especially once you know the moveset down. The key is, typically you want to actually roll into the attacks. Now, that does not hold true for either of the two AoE attacks that Ava can use. Now, with these homing soul masses, just run to the left or the right, whichever way you prefer, choose it and stick to it. Typically, you won't even have to roll as long as you start strafing left or right while the projectiles are actually starting to come out. Now do watch out with the pause swipes because there are two different variants. There's one that is significantly delayed like that one, but then there is one that comes a lot faster and you need to be very reactionary if you want to dodge it appropriately. Now with the leaping attack, you can either have the pause swipe or you can have a grab attack. Either way, if you roll towards and to the right, you can dodge them fairly easily. And there's the second of the two AoEs. So there's one AoE that produces ice spikes along the ground, and then there's another one that is closer to Wrath of Gods. Either way, they have approximately the same radius, so one or two rolls backwards will get you to a safe distance. When Ava runs backwards, you can know that it's either going to be one of the leap attacks or one of the soul masses. Either way, you should know how to avoid those attacks fairly easily at this point. I always love when I see an NPC summon to heal. Because why wouldn't you? Nearly dead. Of course, my key to the embedded is now at risk. The bosses do seem to wear down your durability more, or at least it seems to in my case. Now, part of the issue is that because of the size of ABBA, it takes more durability because durability is calculated by how long your weapon is actually passing through the enemy, which is one of the reasons why Soldado had some issues with durability in this DLC. And there's the grab attack, landing successfully on me. Not one of the more devastating grab attacks in the game, however. As long as you have average health, you should be okay. But there is Abba, the King's Pet, defeated. Of course, we will pick up his soul. And if we take that soul to Ornifex, we can pick up the Ivory Straight Sword as a reward. We'll be seeing that a little bit later once I actually collect the boss weapons. With Abba defeated, we do have the way open to the Grand Cathedral. We're going to run in here, light a bonfire, and then we're going to have some words with Alsana, who is going to open the way not only to the final boss of the area, but also open up some of those blocked passages and treasures that we saw earlier. In fact, I just ran past a frozen treasure chest you can see right here. We'll be getting that momentarily. So as we walk into this hallway, this foyer, you can see that there are staircase on either side leading up to a figure, and that's Alsana. We can open up these staircases later on. You do need to farm 50 Loy Souls, which I'm going to show you and talk to you about how to do that a little bit later.
down here, if you're feeling exceptionally brave, you can drop down through that fog gate and take on the Burnt Ivory King right now with only a single Lois Knight. Definitely not recommended. I did this before, and I lasted all of approximately 40 seconds. However, with the Ice Broken, we have a lot more to see and do. First things first, we're going to grab this item out of this iron chest. And inside, we'll get a rather unique looking shield, the Vessel Shield. The Vessel Shield, not only does it look unique, and you'll see it in just a moment, it also is a spell parry shield. So if you want to try your hand at actually parrying spells, this is one of the shields for you. But it also has a unique stat in that it increases your Vigor, Endurance, Adaptability, Faith, and Intelligence by 1. And it also increases your Strength and your Dex by 4 each, which is a significant gains in stats. If you're looking for a soul level 1 that's really not a soul level 1 and is actually not that difficult, Vessel Shield would be a great one to equip. If you can actually equip it at soul level 1, which you probably can. But anyway, here we are, back at the beginning. We're running through the gates. You can see that the snowstorm has subsided, and now we're going to have access to a lot more loot, so let's get started. Kill these enemies yet again, because if we don't, they'll just be a thorn in our side later. Fortunately, if you have a weapon with even moderate poise damage, you can actually stun them out of attacks pretty easily. Now we're going to go in here because now the elevator has moved, we do have a few items we can get. And the first thing is a sorcery known as Soul Flash. You could consider this to be a version of Force that actually has damage, but it also has a lower radius. It's really, as the description says, more so for defense than anything else. And here we have the North Warder set. A very interesting set in that it increases the spell duration of some of your spells. And just for fun, I'm just going to put a picture of Sage Frake from Demon Souls on the screen. I don't know why. Just felt like it, I guess. Draw from that what you will. But anyway, the North Warder set does give you about 4% extra spell duration per PC you equip, up to about 25, give or take. Now we are going to focus on killing these retainers because if we don't, they will come up behind you oftentimes and they can get a good backstab on you very easily. So this is the area that we started to run past enemies. Now we have to kill them and loot what's available. In the first set of new loot in the enemies we originally ran past. Hiding amongst these dogs. Again, hiding amongst these dogs. Is the Winged Spear plus 7. So a very common tactic in the DLC is to give us items that were formerly available in vanilla, but to give them to us at an already upgraded state. Hiding under the bridge, five torches, if for some reason you find yourself running out of them. And then these passages on the left and right of the main hallway here were formerly blocked with ice. You can see the remnants on the ground here. And we can get golden fruit bomb, a dried root, and the Retainer Staff. Now the Retainer Staff is very interesting if you're running a fairly low level caster build because it has an extremely high base damage. In fact, at its most upgraded state, you get plus 300 to your magic damage. However, there is no scaling. So if you have low intelligence, but you want to go for a sorcery caster build, the Retainer Staff will actually pump out some significant damage even at your low intelligence. I'm not, I'm not saying you don't have much intelligence as the player. You're probably all very intelligent. I'm assuming. I don't know. But I do mean your stat. Please don't, please don't take offense. Now 
we picked up the Ice Rapier, which is a standard rapier type weapon. However, with the strong attack, it will actually unleash a bolt of ice. So there's the R2 attack. Now the fun thing with the R2 is that because you're actually thrusting the rapier forward, if your enemy is within the length of the rapier, you will do not only physical damage, but you'll also hit them with that ice bolt. So if you're going to use the R2 attack, I suggest you try to use it primarily when the enemy is within the poke distance. Taking care of some of these enemies with rain just because you don't want to get ganked, especially with these retainer rogues hiding in the corners. But man, that scream. It bothers me to this day. Having a, a guttural moan or a growl when an enemy dies is fine, but when they scream like that... I mean, if you don't feel guilty, I'm not sure where your conscience is, but it's definitely not where it should be which is in your heart. Pick up a trio of repair powders, deal with this last retainer rogue so we can move forward. And on this corpse in this little alcove, we do have five small blue burrs. You probably wonder where can I get more small blue burrs? Well, there you go. With these enemies down, we're going to take the first path that truly deviates from the main path, and that is we're going to head over to this bridge. Instead of trying to run across it because there's a gap in the middle, we're going to take this door on the right. There was a wall of ice here before, but now we can actually explore it. And here we have the infamous Porky Bunnies, or the Bone Wheel Skeleton 2.0. These are truly more dangerous than the Bone Wheel Skeletons that you will fight with the Skeleton Lords in the vanilla game. Because not only can they stun lock you indefinitely, but they can also do damage just by being near them. However, if you kill those, you can get yourselves a pair of Monastery Chimes and a pair of Golden Fruit Bombs, and we can move forward to fight more Porky Bunnies. Having a bow equipped will make this a little bit easier because you can snipe a few of them through the pillars because you don't want to be ganged up on too many of these at the same time, especially when we have some new enemies coming up in just a little bit. A pair of Twilight Herbs hidden on this corpse. And you can see that one that we can just barely get to. Which is good because we do have some Witch Tree enemies that we have seen in the Abyss before but we're also going to be invaded by Hexer Nikolai. Now he spawns up on the pathways above, and we really don't want to fight him up there because that is where the witch trees are as well. So typically, one arrow ought to do it, and we can just knock him down to our level. Hexer Nikolai is a caster extraordinaire. He obviously has your standard lightning spears, but he also has Profound Still, which he has just cast, and he also has the Dark Dance. Now, the Dark Dance is a hex that, as you've just seen, causes an area of effect, but then it also causes between three and five Dark Orbs to appear. Both attacks can be very, very devastating. However, Keep on him, don't give him time to back up and start casting his lightning spears. Just stick to him like glue and you should be able to take him out without too much problem. Again, as long as you get him down on the ground level.
The further away you can kill those Porky Bunnies, the better. A pair of old growth bombs hiding in that alcove. Take out the Witch Trees. The Witch Trees with melee are very easy to take out, just so long as you can get up to them. They have no poise, it would seem, so stunning them, very simple. You can see me taking some residual damage just by standing too close. Get ourselves five Amber Herbs. And then there's another couple of Porky Bunnies to deal with. And then we'll head upstairs, we'll finish off the Witch Trees. And we'll meet a familiar face. Except he's wearing a helmet, so a familiar helmet, I guess. Now this gate is going to be opened by us by pulling a lever. However, I don't recommend you open it until you've dealt with the quote-unquote invader that we're going to see in just a little bit, and I'll tell you why as soon as we see him. Now if you try to open this chest without dealing with the witch tree up top, chances are he's going to knock you out of the animation over and over. So you can either go up there and deal with him now, or you can do what I do and just lock on, sidestep to avoid most of the spells, or walk forward to avoid the others. And just take him out at range so we can open up this chest. But once he's low enough, who cares if you get hit? I mean, really, it doesn't even do that much damage. And inside this iron chest that was so well protected, we have three bolt stones. What's funny is that we just got three bolt stones from an iron chest, which typically signifies greater loot. However, over here, just sitting on a corpse dangling over the edge, is a pair of magic stones. Not very well protected at all. And that's going to do it for the items in this episode. However, we do have a little bit more to go. We're going to light this bonfire just to set our spawn point, And now we're going to go deal with this, again, quote-unquote invader. I say quote unquote because it's not really an invader because we haven't been invaded. There was no message indicating anyone has invaded us. However, at the top of these stairs, we have a white phantom that actually gestures to us. And I'll say hello because, you know, I'm kind. However, you can lock on to him. And that should be your first clue that maybe this guy is not exactly as it seems, especially now that we've seen that you can get a ring that will make you look like a phantom at all times. So, I suggest you don't play any of his games, don't open up the lever because you don't want him running through that doorway, and just give chase and wail on this guy as much as you can. He has some dirty tricks up on his sleeve, he is a dirty chugger, so as soon as he gets far enough away he will heal, but he also, as you're going to see just here, well, you can see him trying to wind up, he will actually throw corrosive urns and try to break your equipment. Yeah, he's that guy. If he tries to go up the ladder, keep in mind you can actually hit him. In fact, if you can get enough hits, you'll make him fall. But he'll often run into this hallway, and he'll try to heal, or he'll try to throw corrosive urns. But again, just be relentless. He is actually not as difficult as his invader counterpart in the last DLC. I'm, of course, alluding to Maldron the Assassin. He's not that difficult because he likes to run away even more so than Maldron did. So as long as you can just keep the pressure on, you shouldn't have too much of an issue dealing with him. With him out of the way, that is the last enemy that we're going to see in this episode. So we'll go upstairs, we're going to open up the lever. And in the next episode, we'll see what's on the other side, which there are some very unique pieces of loot and a rather ununique and yet interesting enemy that we'll fight right off the bat. showing you the gate that's opening. And at this point, feel free to rest at the bonfire. Yes, it will respawn the witch trees and the porky bunnies, but in order to get through that gate, it's a pretty straight shot and none of the enemies will follow you for very far. But that is going to do it for episode one of the very last set of Everything Possible videos. If you learned something, let me know in the comments below. If I missed something, you have to let me know that too. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you next time.